Now we want to analyze the construction time and the space requirement for our data structure and we want to figure out how we can do queries and how long they take. Let's start with the construction time. So we have this recursive function that means we have to build some recurrence relation. Can you try to write down the recurrence formula for this pseudocode? So in the base case we only have one point and then we only return a leaf so we take order of one time. Otherwise, we split the whole set of points, and to split it, we have to look at every point once. So we have to find the median, we split it into two sets, that takes order of n time. And then we recursively call the function again, twice, with half of the points. So we need order of n plus two times, however long this function needs, of n over two. So this is our recurrence relation, order of 1 if we have only one point, otherwise order of n plus 2 times the function of n over 2. And this recurrence function that might look familiar to you, so we don't uh, go into detail how to solve this, but this is order of n log n. And if you look closely, this is exactly the same function that you have when you do merge sort. In merge sort also, you take the whole set, you split it into two parts, and then recursively sort both of them. So we have exactly the same running time, order of n log n. What about the space? Well, it's again the same as in the one dimension. We have in the leaves all our elements, and the internal nodes are lines that split it vertically or horizontally. So again we have n leaves, and it again gives us a binary search tree, so we have at most n minus 1 internal nodes. So the space requirement is also order of n. It's exactly the same as we had in two dimensions. Let's move on to the querying. So assume this blue rectangle here is our query rectangle. And now we want to look through our data structure and figure out what we have to do. Well, the first line where we split the point set was this vertical one. And this line goes through the query rectangle. So that means we have to look on both sides if there are any points. Or we have to look on both sides to figure out what part of the query rectangle lies here on the left and what lies on the right. So here we have to move on in both directions. Now on the left side we want to continue. So we want to figure out what part of the query rectangle lies here. The next line we have to look at is this one that splits it into the top and the bottom. And now we see, well, there is no part of the square rectangle at the top, so we don't have to continue there. We only have to continue to the bottom, so we only have to move here. Then we have this vertical line. We see nothing is to the left, so we only have to go to the right. And on the right, there's a single point, there's a leaf, so we can just figure out does this point lie in the query rectangle. We see no it does not, so we don't have to report anything here, and we can move on to the other side, at the root line. So the next line is this one. It splits it into top and bottom, and both sides contain part of the query rectangle, so we have to continue in both. Let's look at the top again, that's a bit easier. The next line to split is this one and both sides contain part of the rectangle, so we continue in both. Both are leaves, so we just check, does this line the rectangle? No. Does this one line it? No. So we don't have to continue and we can move on here. The next line to split is this. We again have points on left and right side. On the right side there's a single leaf, so we figure out this lies inside and we can directly report it. Now we do another split here. This gives us the top and bottom. On both sides we again see there's uh, some part of the rectangle on those both sides. On the bottom there's only the P6, we can directly report it. But now what about here? Now we've done a split to the right, one to the bottom, one to the left and one to the top. And at every step we've determined that there is some part of the rectangle here. So we know there, there is some part of the rectangle to the right of this and to the left of this, to the bottom of this and to the top of this. And as we can see here, this whole rectangle that we built here from our queries, this has to lie inside the query rectangle. 
So when we get here, we don't even have to continue, we don't have to split any further. We can directly report that every point in this rectangle must lie in the query rectangle, because this is a region that's just a sub-rectangle. And the question is, how much time does this take? And the time we get here is order of k plus square root of n, where k is the output. And the square root of n, that comes from the fact that we have to look at how many of these cells do we have where we don't have to report anything. So we take order of k time to report all the points that pays for the steps where we look inside the region that contains this point. But in the beginning here we had to go to the left and figure out does any point lie in this part of the region. We had to check does any point lie in this part and in this part. So we also need some time for all those failed queries where nothing happens. And the question is how many of these do we have? And we can use one observation here. So for all these regions where the boundary of the query rectangle lies, we have to do some test, we have to do some check. So we have to pay something for all those regions that contain the boundary of our query rectangle. And that's the only ones where we have to do some test and we fail it. But how many of these are there? So let's just look at the left boundary of our query rectangle, this one here. And to estimate how many of these regions there are, we can just extend it to a vertical line. And we want to figure out how many regions contain this vertical line. And a region contains this vertical line if one of its boundary horizontals intersects it. And now look at this split line that we had in the beginning. This split line splits the number of regions on both sides in half. And this vertical line must lie on one side. So half of these regions, after a vertical split, it cannot intersect anymore. That means that in every step here we do a vertical split, the number of regions intersected by this gets halved. So we can again build a recurrence to figure out how many of these regions this is at most. And the recurrence looks like this. So we have order of 1 if we are in a region at the very end, this can be intersected. Otherwise, if you are at a vertical split, then the line lies on one of those sides. So it lies to the left or to the right. In any case, it will intersect the next horizontal split. And that belongs to two regions. So we get two regions here that are intersected. Then if we continue, this split doesn't do anything, but the next two splits again do something. So we have to continue in these with these two splits. And these are two steps later. So now, since there's uh, two steps, in every step we have it, there are n over 4 points left after the split. So we have to look at this region here that has n over 4 points and this region here that has n over 4 points. And then we have to recursively figure out how many intersections do we have in those. So that way we get the recurrence 2 for this level, plus 2 times however many we find for n over 4 points for these two levels. And that recurrence formula solves to order of square root of n. This is a very high overestimation usually because now we count whatever is here multiple times but that's the best uh, estimation that we can have we cannot estimate it better than order of square root of n so this works for us so we have uh, order of k plus square root of n time to do a query and this can also be extended to higher dimensions if we have more than two dimensions then we can do a split in dimension 1, then a split in dimension 2, then a split in dimension 3, then dimension 4, and so on, and then begin from the beginning again. And then again we build some binary search tree, where in every step we halve the number of points on both sides. And this gives us a query time of k plus n to the 1 minus 1 over d. 
So if d is 2, this is 1 minus 1 over 2, this is exactly square root of n. If d is 3, then it's n squared and take the third root of it. If d is a 3, is a 4, then this is the fourth root of n to the 3, and so on. So this gets close to n when d gets very large.